Well, every time you go outdoors, you have the opportunity to experience and enjoy the wonders of nature. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. Thanks for joining us today for a special presentation of Nature Animal Odd Couples, a program filled with heartwarming stories of some really unlikely friendships in the animal kingdom out there. And today, through a partnership with the Sacramento Zoo, we've brought the animal kingdom into the studio and into your home so we can learn a little bit more about animal relationships. Today, we're joined by Sam Curtis from the Sacramento Zoo, along with some wonderful creatures. This is Foster, <laughs> and he's feisty. But first, I want to encourage you to call in and show your support for programs that inspire you and enrich your life, like nature and like the zoo. It's all because of your generosity that we can continue to share these exceptional stories with you and your family. We're going to be learning a lot from our Sacramento Zoo friends in just a moment, but now please give us a call at the number on your screen, which is right there, 1-800-270-6601, and show us your support. Thanks. Hello again, I'm Rob Stewart here with our friends from the Sacramento Zoo. We love our partnership with them and thank you for being here. And thank you, Sam Curtis. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you too. Always glad to have you here in the house and in the studio. And today, Sam, you're an education specialist. I am. And today you brought Foster and talk about an odd couple. Foster's in love with you. He is. He absolutely is. You know, uh, he, he really likes me a lot. Uh, not something I expected to happen when I started at the zoo, but uh, it turns out that uh, sometimes uh, these relationships just build. <laughs> All right, how, how did you figure out Foster was in love with you? Uh, you know, we worked together for many, many years, and he was always just kind of a fun animal. We got along really well. He doesn't get along with everybody. And uh, one year, he started to constantly bring me his food. Oh. So every day, you know, we'd go and we'd feed him and he'd get really excited. And after we gave him his food, he had a couple of minutes and he'd sit there with, you know, a mouse in his mouth and he'd just stare. He'd stare. He'd watch me. And then eventually he'd just fly at me with that mouse and try and feed it to me. Oh, did so you eat it? I didn't eat it. No, I don't really darn. like mice very much. It's he not does, true love. Not you didn't take the food from the bird's mouth. So Foster here, you said that he can see so far. When you come in through the zoo, and if you've been to the zoo, you know, you come in the gate and there's the reptile uh, carousel. Is that That's what you right, call yeah. It? And then he's on the other side and he can see you. He can. So, you know, when we, we come up from the other side of the zoo, from where the public entrance is, and we come up right by our cafe. And as soon as we walk past that cafe, you can see all the way clear across the lawn mm -hmm. to where his house is. And he sees us walking by every morning. And when he does, he just starts calling and screaming and flying around, looking to pick things up to, you know, wait for me to come mm -hmm. by so he can give them to me just gets so excited whenever he sees me. I love the connection between humans and animals and the connection with animals and with you at home. You can hear some of the other ones who are waiting in the wings, pun intended. We'll be spending more time with our animal odd couples in just a minute. But first we are going to show you some of our, some of our wonderful things we have here to tell you about. It's $10 for ongoing sustaining donor here. And with that, you get the emotional lives of animals, as well as the Odd Couples DVD. The book is fantastic. It's by Mark Beckoff, and it is something that you definitely want to check out. And so Foster is, you said it would not work for me to hold him. He is a little bit possessive of, of his friends and definitely of me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I don't think he would so much like to transfer from me to you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, he's a little bit bitey. And would this bird, what would he do in the wild? Would he, is, he the do, is he the top of the chain with birds in the wild? Because we have other birds here. You know, he's kind of like a crow. So he's not the top of the chain, but they live in large groups and they're very uh, headstrong animals. And so if they feel threatened, even by a larger predator, they band together and they chase that animal away. So even though they certainly are prey animals to things like eagles and owls, they tend to scare those animals off by working together as a team. Now, you may have mentioned this, but I was really fixated on the bird. Where would this bird normally be in the wild? He is an animal that comes from the dry eucalyptus forest throughout Australia. Oh. So they live almost everywhere in Australia that's not harsh desert. They're a very successful animal throughout their range. Okay, now don't take this personally, but why you? Why did he pick you? I don't know. You know, uh, he has a thing for men. He seems to like men more than women, even mm -hmm. though most of his trainers have been women. Uh, and for whatever reason, he chose me. I don't know, the hair, the mm -hmm. height, the voice. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but he just, he chose me out of everybody else and I'm not gonna complain. I'm happy <laughs> with it. I love it. All right, well, we have a lot of fun stories tonight and so many beautiful animals. 
<laughs> They're peeking over here at us. We'll be spending more time with our animal odd couples in a little bit, but now please take a moment and call in with your generous support and thank you. Hello again. We have a kinkaboo here. Kinka, kinkajou. Kinkajou. <laughs> I'm Rob Stewart with some of our friends from the Sacramento Zoo. I'm whispering because you don't want to freak this animal out. They're joining us in the studio today to talk about animal odd couples, the intriguing stories. Am I talking too loud? No, you're okay. perfect. All right. Intriguing stories of animals and creatures who have developed unlikely friendships and bonds. Not all that unlikely how humans build friendships, right? Well, today's program, we will be spending time with learning about these creatures and hearing their stories. When you hear April's story, it's very special, but right now it's your turn to share a story with us. Give us a call at 1-800-270-6601 right there and tell us how important PBS is to you and your family by making a generous financial gift. Your contributions make every program you enjoy possible. So thank you for doing your part today and by supporting them. When you call in now, we have some wonderful ways to thank you for your contri contribution, including nature-inspired DVDs and books. Take a look and we'll be right back. And we're back here in the studio with Sam Curtis from the Sacramento Zoo. Oh, and this is April. Where's April going? She might go down to the table here, we'll see. Okay, well let's just follow her down there. That's. Uh, can we go down farther on the table here? Okay, that's not a poop, that's, that's food. That's food, that's right. <laughs> that is not a poop. Okay, all right, so this is April, and tell us about April. This thing is hanging on to you, and you told me not to touch it because she could take a bite. She could. Well, April is a kinkajou. There you are... don't want her to bite right now either. I don't want her to bite anybody, me or you. She's a South American raccoon relative, so she comes from the canopies and the rainforest throughout um, the northern tropical parts of South America Aww. and Central America. And they are relatives to the raccoons, so they're very nocturnal. They come out all night long, spend their time foraging for fruits and uh, nectar, and then sleep all day long throughout the day. Have you picked up any interesting relationships that clearly besides with you that April has formed? Uh, yeah, you know, there are keepers that she really likes. So those of us who've been around for a long time, she has really gotten to know us a lot. She spends a lot of time, you know, looking for us and hanging out with us. Uh, she also really loves some of the things that she has in her house. So for instance, she sleeps in either a really nice cozy sack that mm -hmm. she absolutely loves, or she has a really long tube that's full of stuffed animals, and she cuddles up with all those, curls up in this tiny little ball, stuffs herself with stuffed animals all over, and sleeps all day. Look at that. Just look at that little animal wrapped around your head. That is, a, I mean, she, it's so cute. All right, and so does April get along with other animals? <clears throat> April does actually get along pretty well with the other animals, but for the most part, they tend to shy away from her because if you look at her, she's actually a medium-sized carnivore. Even though she just eats fruit, she is an animal that, like a raccoon, potentially could eat meat. She does have sharp teeth. She potentially might predate on small animals, small birds, small lizards. And so most of the other animals around her tend to be a little bit more nervous if she's, you know, too close to them. So, so most of them give her kind of a wide berth. Frugivore? Frugivore, that's okay. the word. It means she eats almost exclusively fruit in her diet. May we try? Yeah, you can try, okay, maybe. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if we can do this on camera. All right, April, I do love you very much. Would you like? Banana? Banana. Banana. She's interested. I don't, I don't know. So, the, where, so do you think that this animal, like do you think April likes people better than animals or? I think she does, yeah. You know, she's really never had a strong association with any of the other animals at the zoo because, you know, they are fairly solitary. Mm -hmm. However, she certainly has built much more of an association with the keepers that she's around all the time. And so okay. she associates us with safety because, you know, we're there, we feed her, we take care of her, we make sure that, you know, she's healthy and happy and that she's warm and cozy and the things that she wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, she tends to at least appear to appreciate that a lot. Well, I love how the zoo really gives you a front row seat to experiences with animals and, and the wild like really nowhere else except for for PBS we are the station that brings you animals in the zoo you really get them live in person that's right well, she's wrapping around your neck she is, she, is it choking you no it's not she has a fully prehensile tail so it's not doesn't have an enormous amount of strength in it but it can support her whole entire body weight so prehensile it's just, is like a hand that's right correct? grasping so she could wrap it around a branch and hang from that branch to maybe grab a bunch of bananas a nice big juicy flower maybe eat some uh, honey from a beehive whatever yeah. it is that she do needs. you know what else I learned that's prehensile a giraffe's tongue. Just like a giraffe's tongue. Guess where I learned that? Sacramento Zoo. The Zoo! zoo. 
<laughs> All right. Well, there's much more to come here live with Sam in the studio. Right, listen. <laughs> he mocks me. Hold on. <laughs> of course, now we're on TV. It has to be day. natural, I guess. <laughs> no, we're back and with the friends from the uh, Sacramento Zoo, and and these are. This is Robbie. This is Robbie. Not. This is Robbie. That's Robbie. <laughs> and you have Julia. And uh, Julia is a thick-billed parrot from right here in the United States. She's actually the United States' last native parrot. And Robbie here is an eclectus parrot from the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific. Oh, wow. And so what, what's going on with the wings of yours? Uh, well, these two birds just so happen to really love each other. And oh, are so they trying to mate? They're not trying to mate, but you can see how yours is a few feet away. So she's very excited. She wants to maybe go over and you know, be near him. She doesn't want to be too far away by herself. They like being near one another. They always Jesus. like to be together. They are, they are really funny birds in that way. Now, you told me they're in love with each other. They are. For real? Well... And how's that happen? They're very heavily bonded with one another. Okay. So, you know, these birds are really social animals. Parrots live together in large flocks in the wild. They like to congregate in large numbers, both for safety as well as, of course, for breeding and companionship. But in captivity, sometimes they don't always have either as large of numbers or they don't always have the same species to live with. And so Robbie and Julia have bonded to one another. You know, and it's so interesting because of where you told me they're from, they would have not met up in the wild. They, would have, they don't come from the same climates. They don't even come from the same parts of the wild. So they would never meet one another in the wild. So they've, they feasibly would never have seen this type of, of bird. Absolutely. Then, you know, the funny thing, Robbie, the females of his species are actually a deep red color. They don't look anything like Julia. And so not only is it not even the right color of a bird, but uh, they would never see one another in the wild. Okay, so which one doesn't like it when the other one is out of its sight? Neither of them really like it, but Robbie especially is very upset when Julia leaves. Okay. So when she goes into her little carrying crate to go on maybe a Zoomobile program to visit a school classroom, Robbie runs around in circles around that crate, clucking and kissing and making tons of different noises because he's very upset that she's leaving. Hey, this bird is so pretty. He really is. All right. So we hope you're enjoying having fun with these little beautiful animals today from our friends at the Sacramento Zoo, the unlikely animal friendships. Can I drop my arm down? Yeah. Okay. And now we'd like for you to call in with your support. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rob Stewart again here with our friends from the Sacramento Zoo. We're spending time uh, talking with them today about interesting animal friendships that would not normally happen, but at zoos and sanctuaries around the world. They do. Animals that don't normally interact are learning how to get along. And in many cases, they're building powerful relationships and friendships. And we even met a bird earlier who's in love with Sam. It's the truth. <laughs> if this is the kind of programming you appreciate on your local PBS station, then give us a call right now. We have a variety of great ways to thank you. And be sure to ask the phone operator about those when you call. All right, so this is Sam Curtis, and we've been with Sam throughout the program. Sam, we have a frog, clearly. We do, yeah. Actually, a Colorado River toad. A toad? Toad. Okay. You well, know, but all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Kind of interesting, uh, you know, situation there. Wait, say that again? All frog or all toads are frogs, uh -huh. but not all frogs are toads. Okay, got it. All yeah. right, and so I just touched him, and he's really cold. Yeah. You know, uh, frogs, toads, amphibians, as well as reptiles, they don't, uh, they're not able to self-regulate their body temperature. So people call them you know, cold-blooded. Uh, but what it means is just that they rely on the outside temperatures to keep their body temperatures regular. So they go into the sun if they're, they're too cold, they go into the shade if they're too hot, they might go underground, they might go in the water to mm -hmm. heat up or cool down depending on the situation around them. Okay, so we've been talking about animal relationships throughout the show, and do, do you have any interesting relationships with this animal? We do. So, you know, the funny thing about frogs and toads and a lot of amphibians is many of them, this one included, are very toxic animals. And so what that means is that they tend to really get along with everybody. And so we can house animals like this toad with pretty much anything that she won't eat. So she's oh. more than happy to be friends with larger lizards, other large frogs or toads, other kinds of reptiles or amphibians, and even fish that are not small enough to be her prey and are not going to eat her because she's a fairly toxic animal. So she doesn't worry about it, and she gets along really well with almost everybody. Like dangerously toxic? Um, she's not dangerously toxic, but there are many frogs and toads out there that are incredibly dangerously toxic animals. Poison dart frogs, for instance, are super toxic animals, at least in the wild. Uh, this one here, you would never want to eat her. You would get very sick, but uh, she probably wouldn't you know, kill you if you licked her the way that maybe a little poison dart frog could. Okay, I don't think we're going to be licking the frog, but Definitely you, did, you did have... What's the frog's name? Her name, well, is Mrs. Toad. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be seeing Mrs. Toad later. 
and we'll be chatting more with our friends from the zoo in just a bit. But right now, let's check back in with my co-host, Kelly Rains, who does not like frogs at all. It has completely freaked her out, and it's hilarious. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he just pooped all over me. It's okay. All right. All right. Roll with it. It's live TV. Okay. <laughs> so... Tell me what we have here. Well, we have a desert tortoise right here. His name is Herkimer. And mm -hmm. in your hand right there, we have Sapphire, <laughs> our uh, burrowing owl. Okay. Hi, Sapphire. Did I scare the, the poop out of you? <laughs> well, you I know, couldn't resist. Rob, or, birds poop all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she definitely had to go when she had to go. Well, she's so pretty. This is a burrowing owl. That's right. I've seen this beautiful bird before. What's its name? Her name is Sapphire. Sapphire, you're so pretty. Is it true that owls' heads go all the way around? It's not. So they go about three quarters of the way around a circle, 270 degrees. So not all the way around, but definitely they can look behind them and even a little bit further. These birds play such a crucial role in the environment. They do. You know, uh, owls are m big, huge predators, and this bird right here keeps down pest populations of rodents, eats tons of insects. They really help to, you know, bring down the animals that we don't want to have around, usually our homes and especially the food that we grow, especially here in California. Now this uh, owl is checking out our friend on the table and our friend on the table is eating, are those dandelions? It is, that's his absolute favorite food in the whole world, dandelions. Okay, tell us what we have here. This is Herkimer and Herkimer is a California desert tortoise. And he is actually California's state reptile and the really? yep, and the nonprofit Sacramento Zoo's oldest animal resident at about 88, 89 no years old. No way. Yep. He is a very How? old man. He's 88 years old. Yeah. That is so sweet. And and why are these are these I mean this is going to sound crazy, but are they friends? They are. You know, these two animals right here get along uh, very well. And in the wild, these guys, uh, believe it or not, it may seem strange, it may seem very odd, but they would be very good friends. Desert tortoises big enor dig enormous burrow complexes that animals like this burrowing owl rely on to be able to survive in the wild. Now, what if they find each other in the burrowing hole? Well, thankfully, tortoises eat pretty much nothing but dandelions, cactus flowers, and fruits, and other mm -hmm. small plants. And burrowing owls definitely don't eat tortoises, so they would get along just fine. I can't believe that this tortoise is 88 or 89 years old. Yeah, well, That's fascinating you to know, me. Rob, believe it or not, that's not even the end of his life. He might live another 30 to 40 wow. years. Wow. And you said, if I, if I heard you correctly, because I'm focusing a lot on the animals, <laughs> that this is the oldest animal at the zoo. He is, absolutely. Fascinating. How many dandelion does this thing eat a day? Uh, he will eat uh, as many as he wants. I've seen him eat over 50 dandelions in a day, mm -hmm. uh, if he's really uh, determined and he just wants to move around. Uh, but his diet consists of other things as well, leafy green material a little bit of vegetation, um, but we bring in flowers in the spring and summer. I love telling people that the E and KVIE uh, stands for education, and boy, these animals are educational. They're part of your educational outreach program that is unique to the Sacramento Zoo. They are, absolutely. You know, these animals go to schools, they go out for uh, shows and presentations to help spread the message of conservation and uh, education at the zoo. Look at that thing right there. That is wild. Look at it. Boom. He saw himself. This program is here because of your direct support. And the best way to do that is by becoming a sustaining donor here with KVIE. Here's Kelly with all the details about this important way of giving. Look at the little baby. Look how cute. He's so sweet. This is a benefit of one of the programs you were telling me about. That's right. So, you know, the Sacramento Zoo is really heavily committed to conservation. We support uh, many, many conservation efforts across the world, both local and international. And this is an animal that has benefited from one of our conservation drives, our Quarters for Conservation. So nice. burrowing owls are a local animal, and uh, people who come to the zoo uh, automatically donate a quarter of their admission fee to conservation efforts that they then get to vote on right at the front gate. So, you know, we, you've brought some amazing animals here today. And we're so thankful for you uh, for doing that. And you know, we're, we're about out of time, but what's the oddest animal adventure or ad animal odd pairing you've seen? Oh, the oddest animal pairing I've seen. Uh, I have to say that I've heard about the hippo and the tortoise, and that's probably the oddest animal that I've, I've ever heard of is a, a large hippo and a little, well, a large tortoise, but compared to a hippo, very, very odd animals. Okay, this one's trying to get away. <laughs> we'll, we'll have more to come at the end of this special presentation of nature, animal odd couples, but your experience on KVI Public Television never ends because there are hundreds of hours you watching this 
of, of science and <laughs> nature programs every year for you and your family to enjoy. Each of these shows inspires you in a different way. It inspires me and helps you learn about your community and your world in a way that you may have never thought about before. And these shows are great to share with your kids and your grandkids to start their appreciation of the natural world early in their life. Plus, it's fun to bring the outdoors indoors and sit right here with us and enjoy that. Thank you for watching and for supporting your local PBS station. Pick Herkimer up toward the camera. Thank you for such a special <laughs> program. We'll see you next time. Stay with KVIE PBS. Say bye-bye. Making a donation for your favorite programs is quick and easy to do. You can become a sustaining donor by making a contribution on a credit or debit card. A sustaining donation is an ongoing monthly contribution that continues for as long as you want it to and at whatever amount works for your budget. Sustainers enjoy no expiration to their membership because it renews automatically every month. That also means no reminder notices and no renewal mailers either. Less mail in your inbox, more programming on your television. KVIE also accepts one-time donations at any time and at any amount. And you can do that with a credit card or by writing a check or money order. Contribute today by calling 1-800-270-6601 or online at kvie.org. And thanks. KVIE would like to thank our phone bank volunteers for donating their time to KVIE.